so this is how that looks in MATLAB. So this checks to see if the determinant's less than zero. If it is, we flip R. We also have to flip T because it's also part of that same matrix that this came from. Here's where we enforce the fact that R has equal singular values. Um, we take the SVD of R. We recreate R using a um, matrix of uh, where the diagonals are all 1, 1, 1. So that enforces um, this to have singular values of all ones. Okay, one other thing we have to do is, since we're changing the scale of R, I also need to change the scale of T correspondingly. So the, the trace of R is supposed to be equal to 3. So if it's not, if the trace of D was actually not 3, I'm going to uh, take the ratio of that to get the scale factor that I need to divide through by t here. So the resulting um, properly in scaled r and t is is given here as m. So I'm going to just re reproject those points back onto the image and that's going to be in color red here. Okay, so you can see um, the green is, again, the ground truth, white is measured, and red is uh, estimated using the derived pose. So if we look at the derived pose, here it is. Um, so again, the th the, this 3x3 three three is the rotation matrix, and here is our translation. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out the error. So in this case, as we created the data, we know the true ground truth pose before we added noise. So the error between um, what we derived, what we estimated as the pose, and the, the ground truth um, for translation would just be the difference between those two vectors, the translational portions. So we just take the norm or Euclidean length of that vector. The rotation, though, is harder because there's three angles. Um, however, we can, we can essentially get that down to one angle by, um, by finding the axis angle equivalent of the difference matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derived um, rotation matrix, I'll call that the estimated um, coordinate system of the model to the world, and we also have the ground truth um, orientation of the model to the world. And what we want is the uh, relative orientation from the estimated pose to the ground truth pose. So ideally, that's zero angle. It's an identity matrix. But if it's not, um, it will be some small uh, rotation. So then we're going to find the axis angle equivalent of this rotation matrix. So if you recall from a while ago, when we talked about rotation matrices, we can always express a rotation as a rotation about an axis k uh, using an angle theta. And um, so you can convert from uh, the theta k form to a rotation matrix using this. Or going the other way, if you have a rotation matrix, you can recover the theta and the axis k. In our case, um, we really don't need the k. All we really care about is the magnitude of this angle here. So to apply that in our example, we um, here's the, com the computation of the uh, translation error, taking the norm of that difference vector. Here we're computing the um, estimated rotation times the transpose of the true rotation, and that'll give us the difference. Uh, a rotation matrix that represents the difference between those two rotations. And then we use the formula on the previous slide to compute the angle about some axis that transforms one to the other. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So in this case, um, the error was 0.1 between the um, ground truth pose and our derived pose. 
that's the translational portion. And the rotational error in degrees is, uh, is 1.08. Okay, so let me just uh, finish up this topic by talking about another use of these linear equations. Um, so what we've been talking about so far is using a known model with known point 3D points to compute the camera matrices, to compute the positions of the cameras, or equivalently the position of the model, the pose of the model with respect to the camera. But let's take a look at what if, we, what if we knew the cameras and we wanted to recover the positions of some points. So this is a good application of this, uh, which is called motion capture, where a person wears um, a series of targets, optical targets like this, and cameras are mounted um, around the person in the scene to track these points and estimate their 3D locations. So this is useful for biomechanics research and also for uh, generating motions for animations. So the idea is we, um, we determine, we first de calibrate the cameras, we determine their intrinsic and extrinsic parameters. And then in runtime, we put points out there. Each marker must be seen by more than one camera. and and if it is, it can be reconstructed from the image points. So how do we do that? Well, using the same equations we did before. Namely, we write out the uh, image point locations, little x and little y, in terms of the 3D point x, y, z, and the pose of the camera. Um, and again, multiplying out in a, to get in a single linear equation like that. So here, the x, y, z, the capital X, capital Y, capital Z of the point is unknown, but everything else is known. So we can, again, put these equations into the form ax equals 0. Here, um, the unknown x is just the x, y, z of the point. And again, solve for x using the solution of the uh, system of homogeneous equations. We will need multiple cameras to solve for a point. Um, how many? Well, um, one camera observing a point has two equations. Right? Um, we actually have three unknowns, so we need at least three equations. So we need at least two points. Two, I'm sorry, two cameras, and that would give us four equations like this. But of course, more would be better. So remember, though, that each camera has its own known parameters, um, R11, R12, etc., that go in, in these equations here.